Hello, everybody, and welcome to this most important freaking episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we are finally going to figure out the difference between artists and craftsmen. Okay, because I know you guys were all, like, staying up late at night going, God, I wish I knew the difference between artists and craftsmen. But now you're going to know, so everything's going to be fine. You can shut the fuck up. Okay, so this is going to be great. This is going to be good. I almost have enough caffeine to make this fucking actually happen. But because Fox made fun of how long it takes me to do an intro, He said it takes me 16 minutes to do an intro on an episode where it took him 37 minutes before he even got into his episode. I need to hurry this up. Got to get the show on the road. The roadzo. So the first thing we're going to do here before me telling you that you need to go over to iTunes and give this show five motherfucking stars. Now we'll just do that now. Go do that thing. I want to give a big thank you to... All of the motherfuckers who do the right thing, who know that this content does not come free, who carries the ball for your broke asses, and make sure that you can get this content and continue to be a broke ass, while they pick up all the slack of you being a fucking loser. Okay, so let's give a big thank you to those fuckers real quick here. I want to give a big thank you to you motherfuckers over on Patreon. You know who you are. Michael, Deborah, Cedar, Harry, thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. Want to give a big thank you to all the motherfuckers over in the thank you crew on the tubes. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Britt. Thank you, JH. And thank you, Jan. You guys are cool as shit. Thank you. And now for the biggest of the heavies over in the fucking anarchy crew i want to give a big thank you to to bunny to nate to mindy to hannah to thomas to tim j to lisa to josh to shaylin to tim g to chill baby and to tamara you guys are fucking awesome and you know what i keep misplacing this but i want to give a big thank you to jessica as well so thank you Drum roll, please, for the um, fucking number one chappy over in the chapbook of the month club. Now, here's the deal. We have a number one chappy. And now we're having another chappy who's coming in. So these two are either going to both be the number one chappy, or I'm not going to be able to say number one chappy anymore. But I want to give a big thank you to Caitlin. You are king touch shit. Thank you so much. And I know the SDG's coming right back. But anyway, now that all of this has been said, the most important thing you guys need to do is remember that your mom needs you. Your mom cannot do what your mom needs to do without you helping your mom out. And if you want to just make your mom think you're a piece of garbage, continue doing what you're doing, which is nothing. But if you want your mom to... At least to your face, not think that you're a total disgrace and a loser. You need to get over to igg.me slash at slash your mom, spelled Y E R M O N, and make sure, and I said M at the end there, right? Yeah, okay. And make sure that you join the crowdfunding campaign for winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. So you can get the book that is going to be the best book that's ever been written since before ever. Don't know what that means, but your mom knows what it means. And your mom will brag about it to all of your mom's friends, because that's the kind of person your mom is. Okay. (sighs) So there's all sorts of fun stuff over there. And I'm going to be doing a bigger thing about that quite soon. So with all that said, Let's get into the shizno. All right, here we are. Welcome. I'm going to try to be as serious as possible. I know that's kind of hard to imagine a guy like me being serious about anything, but you know, things happen. 
So I know a lot of you guys, like I said earlier, have been thinking, what's better, an artist or a craftsman? Because that's a question everybody asks. Over the last couple weeks, I've been kind of wrestling with this. And the answer is, is that you cannot answer this because these are two completely different things. They do not exist on the same plane. They are completely different fundamentally different okay so let's kind of start dissecting each one of these and kind of find out what's happening here so what is a craftsman okay now a craftsman is somebody who learns how to do something they learn all of the skills they learn all of the techniques so they can then reproduce the stuff that they've learned to make their own things. This could be anything from a carpenter to a coffee table maker to a surgeon, okay, to a formalist poet. They learn skills and then in their work, quote and unquote, they use those things that they've learned and do them point by point to make the thing that they're supposed to make. That's what they do. That's the most important thing to them. And since obviously we're going to be talking about poetry here, this is why I throw out that line all the time that formal poetry is plagiarism. And I don't want to get into that too much right here, especially right now, but it's the same kind of thing. Like, there are certain skills that are recreated, copied, in order to make something, okay? Now, um, the other thing, and because of this, because of this, like, recreating things, craftsmen, their whole aesthetic is based on objectivity. You cannot be subjective craftsman you cannot do it you know like if a heart surgeon d does surgery on you and then it's not very good you're just gonna fucking die okay if a, a carpenter builds a house and the house isn't quite good it's gonna fucking fall over okay you you, you see what i'm saying here like it has to be judged. It has to be objectively good. And so for all of these many, many months and years where I've been arguing with certain formal poets about this thing, this is why we can never agree on anything. Their entire existence is based off of objectivity, is based off of being judged. That's how it all works for them, okay? So the other thing about this that um, kind of boggles my mind a little bit is that the, the craftsman poet, okay, the craftsman poet is either so full of self-doubt or is such a perfectionist, and I do air quotes on this because I don't really know if that's what it is, that they constantly get in their own way to be able to do anything or finish anything. Okay. Now I think a lot of the self doubt and the perfectionism is the exact same thing. You, you can't trust the words you choose. You can't because it's never going to be good enough because you know that you're only writing to be judged. The only reason why you're creating anything in the first place is so someone can objectively critique it and you hope that when they objectively critique that that they are going to like beam about how amazing it is even though um for most poets in this world that is not the case it's like fighting a fucking losing battle it seems like and i think a lot of it too is because a lot of the critics objectivity is based subjectively on who they actually like and who they don't like, which is fucking hysterical and a paradox in and of itself. But let's keep going here. 
So because these craftsmen poets take so long to do the things that they're supposed to do, which is write poems, because it takes them so long to do this, and because they are taught that you can only write possibly maybe one or two decent poems in a year, they have all this fucking spare time. So what are they going to do with that spare time? They might read a bunch of other poetry, and when they do that, the most of it they're probably going to think isn't really that good and that they could do better, but they're not going to attempt to do better because they've already met their quota for one or two poems that year, okay? So they just have to kind of sit on it. But the next thing they do, they become critics, and they start writing fucking essays, and start running their fucking mouth about how other poetry is not good and how their poetry is superior. And then they might just start writing critiques on certain poems. And all of these, it's amazing how many formal poets are also critics. And the only reason why they are is because they're fucking bored. They've been taught that they can't write that much and they can't publish that frequently. So what do they have to fucking do? Well, I'll talk shit on everyone else's stuff for a little bit. It's fucking hysterical. My, my thing would, would always be like, if you don't think poetry out there right now is very good, write better poetry. Spend your time with your craft and make better fucking poems. I mean, it's craft-based. You have the fucking recipe to do it. So just do it. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine, like, Chef Ramsay, like, in the kitchen, like, starting something because he's hungry, and then halfway through going, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to cook this week. That's a little too much for me. Or a doctor performing open-heart surgery. Like, halfway through, the doctor's like, I don't know. I'm not really feeling how I did this thing. Mm, I need to step away from this for a minute. I need to put this in a drawer. Can you guys just keep the chest open for me and keep the oxygen on them? I'm going to go outside and see if I can see a bird get inspired before I come back. Okay? Because that doesn't happen. But I'm talking to you about craftsmen who know how to do the craft. So why don't they do the same thing that these craftsmen poets do? Because craftsmen poets have been taught by academia that they shouldn't be putting too much shit out. And they should take some time. You know? And the funniest thing about that is a lot of this idea that you should do this comes from motherfuckers like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Like, oh, Horace said nine years you wait before you put a poem out. And everyone's like, yeah, that sounds pretty solid. Jesus Christ. Come on, guys. All right. Oh, let me explain. Let me talk about this a little bit for you here. So there was this dude, this amazing poet that everyone fucking loves and cherishes and all this shit. He just put out a poem. Like, it just got published in some fucking magazine, okay? He puts it out, and he hasn't been published. He hasn't published anything in 10 years. 10 years, okay? And everyone was super excited to read this poem. This is crazy. You would think that this fucking rock star motherfucker coming out with a new poem in 10 years, everyone's going to read this poem and think it's the fucking second coming, Okay? People read the poem. Did people love it? Maybe. Did people not like it very much? Maybe. Did people say publicly that they thought it was okay, but then behind closed doors talk a bunch of shit on it? Probably. So here's the thing. If in 10 years, when you finally put a new poem out, and it isn't the most well-received thing in the world... Why not just put shit out all the time if your, like, ultimate goal is mediocrity? You know what I'm saying? 
But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You could put out subpar shit all the fucking time. And the fact that this poet made a comment when the poem came out, well, if you're a fan of mine, you're probably not going to love this poem or something along those lines. He's basically telling you, I know you're not going to like this, but hey, I'm going to say something to make me sound like I'm above it and not give a shit. Fucking hysterical. Oh my God. Dude, if I fucking paid to fucking go like $100,000 plus to go to fucking school to learn to be a poet and then paid a bunch more money to be in a fucking MFA program, okay, and did all this shit, and then at the end of all of that, my professor guys were like, I, I write a poem and I show it to them, they're like, yeah, uh, you might want to kind of just sit on that for a little bit, you know, maybe do some revisions kind of work on it. So basically the same thing that you would tell someone who didn't have any schooling, you would still have to do. So if this is the case, then all of this education is worthless. Like why are you not able to succeed at the top of your craft after going through all of the education for it? Is it subjective? Because you would think that if you went through all of that, objectively, you would be able to do the thing that you paid to do. This whole thing is like the biggest scam. It's ridiculous. Anyway, okay, I'm not going to, but here's the deal. Academia needs something to judge. Critics need something to judge. So having an objectified art is very important to them because if it isn't and you don't care you take all the power away from them and they have nothing to do they have nothing to bitch about they have nothing to hang their hat on but if they cultivate a entire group that's core focus is pleasing other people and people thinking that like your opinion of their work means more means more to them than them just doing the work then you created quite a little cult that you're going to make a shit ton of money on so good job there that that sounds like a good way to do it anyway anyway okay so now we've talked about what a craftsman is okay we've we've talked all about this now now we're going to talk about what an artist is okay an artist is somebody that creates and does something because they have no choice. They do it because there's an urge. There is a compulsion. There's something that pushes through them that is almost greater than they are to happen, to explode, to blast out on everything. Okay? That, that is what an artist is. Art is completely subjective. Art is anything to anyone when they are creating it. Art is anything to anyone when they are taking it in as a viewer, a connoisseur, or whatever. It could be anything to anyone because it is subjective. It's art. Artists create and create and is, are constantly doing things, which is why they typically don't have time to constantly read everything there is to read, to constantly study everything there is to study. And more often, and, and more importantly, I should say, don't have enough time to bitch about all the stuff that the craftsmen bitch about. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why is because they're busy doing. They're, they're making. They're creating. And when you spend time bitching about others, it takes away from the time that you could be creating. And as someone who has been spending a lot of time bitching about people who are never going to change their minds because they're not even the same person, I've made a lot less art since I've been concerned with having debates with motherfuckers. I really, really have. And it's driving me crazy. Academia hates true artists 
because they cannot judge them. They can, but usually the artist doesn't fucking care. And if the artist doesn't care about the judgment or the opinion from the academic or the critic, it leaves them feeling empty because their only power is in telling you that they think something of your work. And if you don't give a shit, what are they? What are they left with? They are nothing. They're absolute nothing. They're not even dog shit on a shoe because that's something. They are nothing. They have no point. They do not even exist. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, usually when this happens, what the judge, what the critic, what the academic does is they go straight to, well, why don't I just minimize this whole body of work? Why don't I minimize this entire school of thought? Because that way, if I diminish what this thing is, I don't have to worry about it, not accepting my critiques of it. So if I say, well, this isn't really a thing, but this over here, this is a thing. Why? Because I can objectively judge this. I can objectively critique this. So this exists. This is real. This over here, it just does whatever it wants. So it kind of isn't even a thing. It's not something that anyone ever needs to worry about because it doesn't exist and it isn't real okay so now that i have figured this out that the craft poets of the world aren't even playing the same fucking game as i am we're not even in the same fucking zip code i really don't give a shit anymore i was trying to talk to craft poets as artists and they're not and they're never gonna be because that's not what they're here for that's not what they're into craft poets have no intention of ever actually making art they don't give a shit that's not what they signed up to do you know what i'm saying so like for me me being an artist this is who i am this is my fucking soul this is my blood this, like, I fucking ooze it, and when it fucking happens, it fucking explodes. When I get a fucking light bulb above my head, my whole fucking world goes dark, except that light bulb, until that light bulb turns out, and then the lights in my life come back on. And it's compulsion. Like, I almost have absolutely no control over it. Okay? Whereas, for the craft poets, this is just something else that they do. This is, like, their kind of fun hobby. It does not drive them. It doesn't consume them. It doesn't control their life. And I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but I'm saying that one is not art and one is. One is a skill and one is an art. That's it. So there's no need to ever argue this again. Craft poets of the world, go unite, do something else. Because seriously, all you guys do is come up with different arguments on how free verse poetry isn't poetry. Free verse poetry is an oxymoron. You know, if you want your formal poetry to be better received, if you want formal poetry to be more popular, if you want any of these things, just fucking write better poems and write more of them so people know that they're fucking happening. But just like writing one or two poems a year and then bitching for six months that the other exists, no one cares. So um, I don't know if I'm going to continue down this road because we, we got here somehow. Okay. But I don't know if I'm even going to put any more thought into this. So you let me know if this is something you're interested in. 
And if you guys want to hear me talk about this stuff more and get into more granular detail, I will. So just send me an email at ihatematwallgmail.com. If not, then we could all talk about bigger and better things that motherfuckers care about. And while I create fucking art, um, I will use a craftsman coffee table to hold my coffee while I fucking actually create something from deep inside my fucking soul. Okay. But I'll probably have that coffee table my whole life and it'll be a good coffee table. There's nothing wrong with that coffee table. <sighs> so anyway, so um, on with the butt plugs. And here we are with the butt plugs. And real quick, just to plug some butts, your mom. I'm here to plug your mom's butt. That's it. Go over to igg.me slash at slash your mom. There will be a link down below. Go over there and check out all the cool perks and things that you could get. There's things from all my paperbacks, to all my chat books, to stickers, to photos, to um, me writing your mom a note. I'll do it. I'll do it right now. Okay? So let me know what you want to do. Get in on that. Time is of the essence, and it's running out. So we got to jump on this bad mamma jamma, okay? So with that said, everybody, help your mom out, type hard, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.